the Chicago Bears. They are 2-0 in the season, Clarence. They've been impressive so far in these first two weeks. They traveling to Atlanta to take on the, Cal- the Falcons, who are 0-2 on the season. Who you got, Bears or Falcons? See, you know, we we talked, we discussed this game on, on Wednesday saying Dan Quinn, he, he could possibly be on the hot seat. But I I, I trust I, I trust uh Matt Ryan more than Mitchell Tabisky in this game. But I'm I'm rolling with the Falcons here because they have a quality offense that can put points on the board, but the defense, it has to get better. They have to patch up the hole. But I don't think this game gonna be a, like an exciting game. But I got the Falcons winning this game 31, 31 to uh 29. Okay, I got the Falcons winning this game 21-17. I think the Falcons, you know, I, like you said, I trust Matt Ryan over more so than I trust Mitchell Trubisky right now, you know, overall. <laughs> Excuse me. So I think the Falcons will get the win over the Bears. The Bears are 2-0, and but I still don't believe in the Bears because I still don't believe in Mitchell yeah. Trubisky. You know, I, I don't believe in Mitchell Trubisky, and I don't think he can get it done. I think he's very inconsistent. He has been pretty impressive these first two weeks. I don't expect it to take place. You know, in, in Atlanta, I got the Falcons win this yeah. game, 21-17. And, and think about it too: if he wins in Atlanta, that'd be imp- that'd be an impressive win. Not really. The Falcons zero two. How impressive is that? They I mean they beat an zero and two team. Atlanta mm-hmm. is still considered like one of those teams that 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 that's very good. But they're, they're talented. Just, they're talented. Yeah, they're very talented, yeah. but their their defense is horrible. This is another big time matchup that I'm looking forward to, Clarence, on Sunday. We got the Rams, who are 2-0 and on the season, Ooh. traveling to Buffalo to take on the Buffalo Bills and Josh Allen, who are also 2-0 and on the season. I'm excited about this game, Clarence. Who you got winning this game, Rams or Bills? Well, I already told you the Buffalo Bills is going to take the AFC East. I'm rolling with the Buffalo Bills, man. They got the league, league leader in passing yards in Josh Allen and and the and the and the actually the lead leader and receiver as well is Stephon Diggs. He tied with Kyra really with the two the uh, receiving yards. I'm rolling with the Buffalo Bills, man. They at home, they they look like a different team from last year, Dre. Honestly, and the defense they haven't been there themselves, but I feel like they're gelling themselves back into how they was last season. I got Buffalo winning this one. Aaron, Aaron Donald hasn't had a sack like in two games so far, so I'm looking at Rock, about that. How can they stop him? pass rush him. I got Buffalo winning and this one right here is going to be a tight one 24-24 to 21 Damn you stole my score that's my I got the exact <laughs> same I got the exact same score but the opposite team I got the Rams winning this game 24-21 because I believe right now Jared Goff actually is playing some good football right now for the Rams yeah. players Jared Goff he's looking like he looked that year when the Rams went to the Super Bowl. Like, he's playing good football. So far yeah. in the season, he had three touchdowns, just one interception. He's completing 69% of his passes. He's playing pretty well so far this season, and he completed 74% of his passes last week. He completely outplayed Carson Wentz last week. Like, he completely outplayed him. And, you know, I'm, I'm very impressed with what I'm seeing from Jared Goff. I don't believe in Jared Goff as a franchise quarterback, but I will admit these first two weeks, he has impressed to me because, you know, we know that Sean McVay is going to put him in a position to be successful. You know, like he depends yeah. on that. He relies on that running game. And Malcolm Brown, also the running back for the Rams, he's done a great job at stepping up and stepping in now that Ty Gurley's out of the picture. You know, Ty Gurley's not there no more. So now right. Malcolm Brown, he's getting majority of the carries, and he's done a great job stepping up now that Ty Gurley is in Atlanta. I got the Rams winning a close one over the Bills, 24-21. Let's move on to the next matchup as the Washington football team they are traveling Ooh. to Cleveland to take on the Cleveland Browns. Who you got, Washington football team this, or Browns? See, this is, a, this is another good matchup, too, because you got the number one ranked defense against a good running team. And Chase Young, this is his first game against uh, the first Ohio team in his long career. Uh, and this right here is something to watch because that defense is so amazing, though. And – but – the Cleveland Browns have a two-headed monster that can that can run the ball, that can pound it. But if I if I had to ask you who I, which quarterback I trust more, Baker Mayfield or Dwayne Haskins? Uh, okay, so I, I got okay. I definitely I definitely got the Browns winning this game because their running game is so stacked, and they're gonna they're gonna push the rock tray. I got them winning thirty to twenty-seven. Okay, you got it close. You showing some respect to the Washington football team. I got the Browns winning this game. 
20 to 13. I think the Browns, you know, they, they got some confidence now offensively because they put up 35 points in week two against your Bengals. So I think back Baker Mayfield is getting into a rhythm and Kevin Stefanski is setting him up with the play action. And Od- Odell Beckham even had a nice game in week two. So I expect the Browns to win over the Washington football team. Let's move on. Titans, Vikings, who you got? Oh, I got the Titans winning this game, man. Elite, elite quarterback, elite running back. They, they're two dominant teams. And uh, Ryan Tannehill is actually having a great, a good season so far. I got the Titans winning this game in a fashion beating, like thirty-five to twenty-one. Thirty-five, twenty-one. Wow, you really got them blowing, almost blowing out the Vikings. Okay, Vikings been struggling this year. Kirk Cousins, he's only relied on Adam Thielen. When I watch these Vikings games, I get the feeling he only trusts Adam Thielen. In order for the Vikings yeah. to have any chance, he has to try to open up the offense and show some trust in these other receivers. I think the Titans right now are the better team. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about this game, Clarence, because I want the Titans to win because, of course, I want my Packers to <laughs> separate right. themselves in the NFC North. I got the Titans winning 30 – I got the Titans winning 23-20. I'm going to give the Vikings some respect. I think the Ooh. Titans went on a late field goal. Let's move on. Raiders at Patriots. So you got? This is nice. This is going to be a good game, too. I actually got the Raiders in this one. I'm rolling with them again. I like Josh Jacobs against this team. This this Patriots defense is not very stacked like how it was last year. And I got them winning a tight one. I got them winning 20 to 17. Cam is still good, but I think this Raiders team got more juice than them. I'm, I'm, I'm rolling with the Patriots. Cam Newton was very impressive last week. He showed me something when he had that 397 passing yards against the Seattle Seahawks defense clearance, he showed that he can still throw the football effectively, and he was very accurate throwing the ball. I think Julian Edelman had, like, uh, one of his best games of his career. Isn't that amazing? Like, as yeah. all those years that Julian Edelman spent with Tom Brady, catching passes from Brady, he had one of his best games of his career with Cam Newton. Like, that speaks to Cam Newton's greatness and why he still can throw the ball at an elite rate. I got the Patriots beating the Raiders 24-17, but the Raiders have been playing well so far this season, so I got to give a lot of credit to John Gruden and the job he's done with that Raiders football team. You remember a few years ago, Clarence, we was questioning what the hell John Gruden was doing, trading away Khalil Mack, you know, trading away Khalil Mack, you know, letting go of Amari Cooper. Like, what are you doing? We see what he's doing. He's His plan has developed very well, and now the Raiders have a chance at competing for AFC playoff wild card spot. I can see them possibly making the playoffs as a wild card. I can't believe I'm saying it. Yeah, that's that'd be a shock. Let's move on. 49ers, Giants, who you got? We don't really need to discuss this game for real, but but believe it or not, I still got the 49ers winning their game with their second string quarterback, Nick Mullins, and the Giants team. Their defense is horrible. And Denny Green is tied since he entered the league last year. He's been second most in turnovers. That needs to change, but I got the Giants winning this one, 13 to 10. Wow. Is that your upset pick of the week? This is an upset. No, no, no. I, I mean, I got the 49ers winning 13 to 10. 49, oh, okay. 49ers win 13 to 10. Okay, okay. I'm not about to spend too much time talking about this game. I got the Niners 17 10 over the Giants. The Giants just lost Saquon Barkley to a torn ACL for the season. I think it's going to be too much for Daniel Jones now that he just haven't, doesn't have his start running back to end the ball off to. So I'm rolling with the 49ers to win, 17-10. Your Cincinnati Bengals and Joe Burrow, they are traveling to the city of brotherly love to take on Carson Wentz and those Eagles. Who you got, Eagles or Bengals? Look, man, I would never choose against Ude, man. This is my heart and my head speaking right here. I got the Bengals winning this one in a close game, 24 Why am I not surprised? Why am I not surprised you picking the Bengals? Think about it. The Eagles dealt with – Dealt with three three important injuries on the line, and believe it or not, Fletcher Cox might not play, and their their linebacker crew is a mess. So I think this is the opportunity for Joe Burrow to make some, break some explosive plays because he only got one play that's over twenty yards, and that was a touchdown to use in first career, and that right there we need some explosive plays. And the defense they have to be intact against the run because Miles Miles Sanders is a good runner, but I I think the Bengals can pull, sneak this one 24-21. 24-21. I'm rolling with Carson Wentz and the Eagles to win 27-17. Listen, Carson Wentz damn sure better not lose to the Bengals. He damn well better not lose to no Bengals, okay? Listen, Carson Wentz, I've been bragging about you, okay? I've been on this show, on this show and Wise Guys, arguing with this man across from me about why you are better than Dak Prescott, damn it. Carson Wentz, you better <laughs> Carson Wentz, you better not let Joe Burrow 
outplay you in Philly on Sunday afternoon. I expect a big time performance from you, Carson Wentz, so far in the season, Clarence. Carson Wentz has two touchdowns, four interceptions. He's only completed 59% of his passes. He has been pathetic so far this year from a performance standpoint. Not him as a person, but from a performance standpoint, not. he has been pathetic. And let me tell you something right now, real quick. They have to win this game, and Carson Wentz has to play well. If not, I guarantee you, those Eagle fans, they're going to start screaming, Jalen Hurts, Jalen Hurts. The <laughs> Eagles, that's a tough town to play in, Clarence. They don't play about their sports teams. Make no mistake about it. If Carson Wentz doesn't get his act together real soon, we may see Jalen Hart insert, insert it into the starting lineup sooner rather than later. Yeah, definitely. Okay, let's move on to the big time, prime time matchup. Ooh, the, sun great. the Sunday night matchup, an NFC championship game preview as my Green Bay Packers traveling to the Big Easy to take on Drew Brees and the Saints. My Packers coming into the game 2-0 in the season. Drew Brees and the Saints. They are one and one on the season. They just had a tough loss on Monday night to the Raiders. This is a game that will be played 825 Eastern time on NBC. Clarence, both Devontae Adams and Michael Thomas are both doubtful for this game. I think the Saints announced earlier that Michael Thomas won't play. He's already been ruled out, and it's a good chance Devontae Adams won't play either. It's unfortunate because I want to see these two stud receivers go up against each other. But give me your key matchups in this game. I think it's one of the biggest key for the Green Bay Packers. Let Aaron and Aaron run the show. Let those guys ball, dominate, because Aaron Jones is a beast. Like, dude, that guy right there, Trey, he's a beast. Like, he had 164 rushing yards against the Detroit Lions, regardless of the Detroit Lions. But this guy right here, he make you pay. And believe it or not, they're going up against a, a, a good run defense team in the New Orleans Saints. So this could be a challenge towards him. And it's on the road, Trey. It's on the road. So they can make yeah. some big noise. If they if they if they dominate this Saints defense, then we can be really, we gotta be really careful. Watch what we really say about the Green Bay Packers. Aaron Rodgers, he cannot take a lot of sacks in this game. He, he has to play the game. He has to step up and be Aaron Rodgers. But he has his best friend. His sidekick, Aaron Jones, right behind him. That's going to back him up and lead, help him lead the way. I think the two Aarons is going to be the main factor. But in the Saints game, who is the re – which receiver is going to step up to the plate? You sign Emmanuel Sanders. You have Jared Cook. You have Tra Trayvon Smith. But Emmanuel Sanders in this motion, this is your time to be the lead. And Alvin Kamara, that right there, he, he, he can catch and stuff, but you can't really throw everything at him. Someone on that receiving core has to step up for that same thing. Yeah, I agree with you. But the thing is, one of the key matchups for me is going to be can the Smith brothers, Zadarius Smith, Preston Smith, can they apply pressure on Drew Brees? Also, another player to keep an eye on, Rashad Gary Clarence. We picked him with our one of our picks last year in the NFL draft. He is a pass rusher just like the Smith brothers, and he's been doing a great job these first two weeks at making plays for my Packers on defense. So look out for Rashad Gary and the Smith brothers. If they can apply some pressure on Drew Brees, this game could get away from Drew Brees and the Saints. I know everybody talking about Drew Brees versus Aaron Rodgers, the Saints versus the Packers, NFC showdown between two powerhouse teams. And Vegas, for whatever reason right now, they got the Saints favored minus three right now over my Packers. I don't know why, but they got them favored over my Packers. I think that's a mistake. But I'm worried about Drew Brees, Clarence. I'm worried about Drew Brees because so far this season, you know, his numbers aren't bad. He got three touchdowns, one interception, completing 65% of his passes. But when I watch Drew Brees deliver the football, he doesn't have that same zip on the football that we're used to seeing. And the timing is also off with him and these other receivers. He, ha he still has that great connection with Michael Thomas, but you know, Michael Thomas is not playing right now due to that ankle sprain. But I think Drew Brees, you know, because that timing is off with his receivers right now and he's not throwing the ball with that zip, I think that's part of the reason why you're seeing the New Orleans Saints offensively struggle because so far in the season, they haven't really been lining it up. I mean, they haven't really been impressive yeah. in my eyes.